Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this RPG Maker MV tutorial, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your own custom tile sets. So let's get started. The first thing uh, I want to do is show you the tile set that I've made. Um, basically, it's just a, a filtered copy of one of the dungeon's tile sets. So I didn't want it to look too different. I just wanted to have some sort of uh, something to differentiate it. You know, you can see that there's like darker areas. If this is familiar to you, uh, you may notice that there's something funny about it. Well, I applied a filter to it in Photoshop, and then I just imported it over that. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to your tile sets. So you're going to go to the tile set and figure out which one you want to uh, make a filter of or, or change a little bit. In my case, I wanted to change the dungeon tile set to make it look a little bit darker and have some sort of, uh, I don't know, like contrast to it. So basically copy this and then paste it on a free slot. And then take note of the files that you're, that are uh, the image files that it's using. And then go into your image editing software, in my case it's Photoshop. And you're going to go into your game's uh, project uh, destination path. In my case, it's uh, right here. Uh, but you're going to go to your game, your IMG, and then tile sets. So once you're in your tile sets, um, take note uh, if you took note of those files you're going to need. In this case, it was all the dungeon ones. So I just went with uh, all the regular dungeon ones. And I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to apply a different filter this time. And what I'm doing is I'm holding the control button when I'm left clicking. So I'm finding the next dungeon, holding the control button, left clicking on it. That way I can open them all at once, it saves time. And then we're going to go to the next one. All the dungeons for this. And then once you've selected all the files, just go ahead and open them. And they'll all open at the same time if you did it that way. And what we're basically going to do is go to filter. And then we're going to go to the gallery or whatever uh, your, your software has. And we're going to look through some of the filters that you can do to the tile set. Now, this is the one I was looking at, the cutout, and I think this is the one I'm going to go with. I remember uh, a game, I think it was Brave Fence or Musashi. It had some like unique artwork in it, and that's what this one reminds me of. It's different, but it's kind of similar. But you can see that uh, you have a lot of different options of what you want to do. Uh, I like that one, I feel the post good ones too. I'll just go through them real quickly to show you guys some of the filter options. But I think I'm going to go with that first cutout, because I've already done, uh, the first one you see was uh, ink, uh, ink outlines. These are pretty much all monochrome here, black and white. That one looks pretty trippy. You can make like a, a nightmare scene where the character's in a nightmare or or the character's on hallucinogenic drugs or something and he's like tripping out because he gets some mushrooms or something. And uh, you can have one scene where he's in there. But uh, let's go ahead and select that, uh, that cutout one. And what we're going to do is just put a filter over it. And then we're going to save it as. Remember not to save it because then you're going to overwrite your original one. So go to save as, select the format of PNG, and then at the end of the file, add another extension with something to let you know what filter you use. And this time it was a cutout, so I'm going to type in underscore cut. Or actually I'll do cutout. And then I'm going to save that, uh, interlace on the slowest, uh, smallest compression. And then once we're done with that, we're going to close it, and it's going to ask do you want to save the changes. Tell it no, because it's going to overwrite the original if you say yes. You just saved the PNG, so you don't need to save the original over that same. So we're going to repeat this process and do the same thing. Save it as a PNG with an extension. Cut out. And then we're going to tell it no. Repeat the same process. This one is a good one to do a filter over because you're going to be able to make random dungeons using these tile sets. And if you copy paste, you won't have to do all the X and Oing. And I'll show you what the XO star things are uh, in the tile sets. Because if you want to import your own, 
uh, uh, tile sets, you can do that too, but you will have to specify what the character can walk over and what the char character can walk behind and what the character uh, can't walk on at all. I actually don't like how that turned out, this one right here. Um, it looks pretty weird, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep uh, the format. just for consistency and we'll go ahead and do this one last time filter the cutout this is more of a dramatic effect than the first one that I was showing you guys uh, the first one I did was ink outlines if you were curious and once we've done that we're done in uh, our image editing software so then we're going to copy the, the dungeon one in, in this case, but if you were doing a field or interior, you would do the same thing. That way all the X's and O's here are already set up for you, and it's just going to save you some legwork. But um, say you imported a custom one. Uh, let me go over what you can do with uh, the custom ones. The, by default, they're all going to be zeros. They're all going to be O's. So the character is going to be able to walk through the walls and walk through all the obstacles and everything. You don't really want that. So say this was like a, an obstacle, you would just click on the X, and that X is going to say that the player can't walk through it. It'll, it'll work as an obstruction. And if you click the star uh, on, on the A tile set, you don't have the star option, but on the second tile set, you do. You can see you have stars right here. And this is specifying that you want the player to walk, be able to walk behind it. So you can walk on the same spot as this tile, but this tile will appear uh, on top or in front of the character. But this X tile, you can't walk on. And these O tiles, they're just some rubble on the ground. You can walk over these. So I hope that clears that up for you guys. But by copying and pasting, it pretty much uh, has all these in the same spot. So if you're applying the same one with just a filter, you won't actually have to edit it. It saves you a lot of work. So this image one, we have Dungeon A2. So we'll find our Dungeon A2 cutout and replace it. We're actually going to rename this to cutout as well. And then we're going to go to, um, that was our A1, right? Yeah, A1. Here's our A2 cutout. And then you could even throw in uh, other ones if you want to. Like if you want to put this in there, you can. And now you have more options when you're editing. We're going to go with the A4 cutout. That one's actually um, ink outlines. And then dungeon A5. Dungeon B cutout. Dungeon C cutout. And you can add more if you want. If you want to add the D's, you can. Um, this is where I've added the temple, so I would put this on uh, on the D uh, D selection, and then the E tile right here. And it's already put in. Uh, the X's and the stars right there. However, the, t the new tiles that, that we've added in example A3 um, and uh, D and E, uh, you'll have to change these yourself. You can see that they're all set to O's. So we would just put the X's down where we don't want the player to walk. And I've already done this on uh, the other tile sets and I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me do all of these X's, but I wanted to illustrate uh, so that you guys know how to do this. Basically, if I wanted to make this so that the player can't walk over it, I'm just going to put X's all right here, and then I'm going to leave an O here for the player to walk through the, through the, um, the opening of the door and put stars for the back. Okay, so we're done there. <clears throat> now all you have to do is create a new map. So let's create a new map. And how you specify what tile set you want to use is right on your map property. So right here on this tile set, we're going to check this dungeon cutout, and we're going to say... Cut out dungeon. I am super clever. And I can spell amazing. Um, we're going to make this a little uh, larger than normal just to illustrate what you can do with it. Um, so let's zoom out a bit and let's use the random dungeon creator. Right click on the, the map and click on generate dungeon. And now let's select some of these tiles. And you can see that we have a different map. Uh, well, I mean, it's the same same kind of layout with the generator, but the tiles look a little bit different. And that's kind of cool. Um, this is just one example. You could use um, all kinds of different filters to make 
some really crazy looking dungeons and stuff. But uh, it'll add a little bit of variety to your game. So hopefully you guys like this video. If you do, remember to like, favorite, share, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I'll be happy to help you to the best of my ability. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the next tutorial.